Let's go. Hey everyone, and welcome to the year that Chang'e is finally free. In the words of CL, it's been a long time coming, but we're here now. Kinda unsure whether March is her final month based on her recent live, but regardless, us Biorarangs are really celebrating the inevitability of it. So if she gets free this month, then an amazing gift. But if not, then I want to say at most, it'll be like a June exit since that's when she debuted. But yeah, this video will be about the rise and then sabotage of Chang'e's career. Obviously, many factors are to play in what has happened so far. So the plan is to go through each year and make notes of the impact towards her career. But yeah, before we start, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Riding the highs of competing and ranking 4th overall in the first season of Produce 101, Chang'e would reap the benefits in the short-lived promotion with the final lineup of IOI. Despite the 7-month promotion, IOI would be considered monster rookies, garnering many awards both at the end of the year as well as music show wins. This would garner so much success and recognition which would allow Chang'e to return to m &H with a plan for another debut, but this time solo. Her solo debut was an initial shock as she was pretty here and there in terms of getting recognition during her time at IOI, but once her debut single was released, it was met with so much support. This was her only release in 2017, but it was impactful enough where she almost nabbed Mama's Best New Female Artist. Despite the mixed reception to the initial news of her solo debut, Chang'e came out swinging. Using the residual interest from her time in IOI, she was able to capitalize and start off on the right foot, despite being under such a small company with no other artists. Twenty eighteen would be a good year that would build onto her debut success, as within the first month of the year, she would release what people may think is one of her legacy hits. Roller coaster. Despite not winning any music show wins, the longevity of the song would garner end of year awards and recognition as a female soloist. As well as that, she would then release another summer song of Love You, with some noise but less than compared to how Roller Coaster did. But it was still good enough to satisfy viewers until the next release. This year really felt like Chang'e's first proper year to establish herself. She was getting a lot of promotion and appearing on more shows to create a name for herself beyond just IOI's Kim Chang'e. Twenty nineteen is what most people consider her glory day, as she would finally be launched into mainstream success with the massive releases of Gotta Go and Snapping. Gotta Go was also released in the first month. As well as that, this became her first comeback to score her a music show win, with the dance creating waves around the K-pop community, with many idols covering the choreo. M&H would also nab their first award as a company within the Guyon Music Awards for producer slash record production of the year for the song. Halfway through the year, she would then release Snapping which would then solidify her growing popularity with more music show wins and an extra promotion for a b-side track of Chica. This year really solidified Chang'e as a soloist despite the relative concept change to what she was getting recognized for before. She would also continue to receive many end of year awards and solidified herself as a k-pop soloist powerhouse in the making. Twenty twenty is when issues start to arise for Chang'e. This whole year focused on her promotional cycle for her first full album, Cadencia. Before the pandemic would properly take effect, Chang'e also signed a contract with ICM Partners for global promotions. But obviously, this would then be halted as restrictions were put in place preventing the global promotions from occurring. Cadencia was an ambitious project with 16 actual songs, accompanied by 5 interlude-like songs. In doing so, she released Everything Has, Stay the Night, Play, and Dream of You as pre-release-like tracks. Stay the Night garnered much attention for its concept as well as the voguing and tutting aspects in the choreo. Play would then be released 3 months later with once again more hype for Cadencia. However, there would be some 
issue as a random delay would occur between the next release as Chang'e would then once again start a whole two pre-release strategy starting with Dream of You. This time more information was being released and a confirmed date for her album was set in January making it almost one full year of pre-releases. However little clarifications were being made by Chang'e as the teasers needed correcting. As well as that she would then catch COVID and thus once again delayed the final pre-release and full album. Despite the many releases within the year, her hype would start to drastically fall. Chang'e had only one proper good year and thus had to rely on general public a bit more as she hadn't properly established our fan base yet. MNH had failed to capitalize on the success and momentum in Korea as they banked on that one good year to continue to flow throughout the promotional cycle without actual much promotion. The lack of promotion was also noticeable as State and I had an MV with some variety show appearances, Play had an MV and three musical show performances, and Dream of You had a performance video in which Chang'e was made to learn the choreo three days before filming. This lack of promotion in the general public meant that her hype would fall as the fickleness from the general public meant that she was heard about slightly but mostly fell under the radar as viewers always gravitated towards title tracks as a gauge for whether they liked the idol's music. Also there was a rumor that the CEO of MNH had also changed within this period which also explains a lot of the deterioration between the relationship of Chang'e and MNH. <laughs> Twenty twenty one is when a noticeable decline would be felt. X would be the final pre release in which, once again, only an MV would accompany it before the title track Bicycle was released one month later. Bicycle was the only song properly promoted in the standard music performance route. This kind of meant that for casual listeners, she hadn't been back for almost a year and a half. The song was also met with mixed reception as it was not generally liked, which once again deterred listeners from checking out the album as a whole. With the many songs released beforehand, which included varying concepts, that subjectivity of opinions meant that they would also kind of compete with Bicycle and whether it was the right title track to properly promote. This was one thing that Chang'e slightly sacrificed. She was very into trying out new things without regrets and so she was more content that she was able to try out new things despite the less attention she received. The promotion of Cadencia would also come to an end with Chang'e releasing a final post-release song of Demente. Despite the mixed reception to the title track, the album as a whole received positive reception, with Chang'e getting a win at the 2022 Korean Music Awards for Best K-Pop Album. This general rollout of Cadencia was an issue as competition within K-pop grew. This meant that everything became about quick releases as opposed to long quality releases. So despite the positive reception of Cadencia as an album, prolonging of this album and lack of promotion would decrease a lot of the momentum. Chang'e would then take a 7 month break before she came back with a special single of Killing Me. Once again, no promotions were given as it only got one performance video as well as the MV. This became a recurring pattern of Chang'e which would kind of be a reason as to why she was not able to maintain her hype. Many female soloists have created legacies for themselves. However, it is harder to achieve the continued success as soloists have a greater reliance on casual listeners which is fickle in itself due to the oversaturation of K-pop. Besides IU and Taeyeon, all other female soloists tend to fluctuate in popularity while still maintaining the legacy that they've created. Chang'e is relatively famous. She has established herself as a senior within K-pop being probably one of the more prominent third gen female soloists so whatever she does at least she will have cemented a great legacy and influence to the newer generation. Twenty twenty two is when we would see the tables turn as the closed doors of MH would be exposed. The only release would be another full album of Baron Rare Part One with Sparkling as the title track. This was met with better reception than Bicycle and earned her a first music show win since twenty nineteen. From the album name, there was a presumption of another album, but part two. However, in an infamous live by Chang'e, she would state that Baron Rare Part Two was postponed due to MH's condition. This would be an interesting reason for MH to get as not long after, MNH started updating fans in regards to pre teasers for an MNH new boy group. Debuting a new group requires a lot of money, and thus, despite the claims that MNH's condition was not good, it felt like she was just becoming less of a priority. The original scheduled date for part two of the album was in September, almost two months after the first part of the album was released. 
as her plans were to promote some of the part two songs during her visit in the MIK festival in London. During that same live, she would also vent her frustrations about m and as they weren't doing their jobs properly. From posting teasers late to not uploading behind the scenes or teaser pictures for fans, Chang'e would constantly apologize personally or upload them herself with 198 pics during sparkling promotions all released in one day due to m and incompetence. She has also wanted to go on tour but her company apparently wouldn't let her. This would have made sense if the pandemic was still relevant. However, her promotions overseas in Australia, UK, and almost Dubai received positive reception. Chang'e has made a name for herself and could easily sell out certain concert venues. She has had a catalogue of music worth wanting to view for at least general fans. However, with her senior status and potential potential creative differences, it seems as though m potentially could sense the fact that they were losing Chang'e. Considering the investment made when debuting two groups and two other soloists, Chang'e basically made m So my opinion is that they decided to sabotage her instead of letting her remain successful elsewhere. <laughs> Twenty twenty three would have no real news come out in regards to Baron Rare Part Two or even new music. However, reports in late January would come out fueling rumors that Chang'e decided not to renew her contract and would leave M and H in March. She would then do one live in late February in which she talks about her situation once again, referring to M and H as a new company. She claims to barely know anyone left in that company. She also claims to have asked many times for M and H to update fans in regards to her, yet they continue to ignore her, as well as that. Yeah. Nothing is changing in March, as she claims the article was kind of off, but the assumptions made by fans were pretty accurate. This may mean that the assumption of not renewing her contract was correct, however, the date of March might just not be accurate. As of early March, she has continued to live her life, giving small updates of what she's been doing. However, the time will come when she is able to finally escape the hellhole that is emanate, and hopefully we get to see Baron Rare Part 2 in some form. Final thoughts. Chang'e has clearly been been sabotaged. And unfortunately, this is not just a Chang'e only experience. What's sad about this case though, is that she literally built m &H from nothing to something. Her success brought m &H the ability to debut a girl group where they would eventually neglect, a boy group that they just recently debuted, and two other soloists that are pretty low-key still. All of that, and she ended up getting the short end of the stick. The future will really depend on where she decides to align herself with. I mean, Chang'e still has a decent fan base, as she has been able to win a music show for her most recent comeback. It may have not been one of the more bigger prestigious music shows, but it still shows the power that she has with her fans still. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think about Chang'e's career, her eventual freedom, and whether you have any other points to add to this video. She was actually the first idol to get me into K-pop, and so I'm glad I'm finally able to do a video analysis on her. Other than that, the next video should be another recap and review of Boys Planet, so please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!